like, why is it? Why are you so shiny? I sprayed my face. <laughs> I sprayed with some of that. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Art Success with me, Adelaide Damoa. Today I'm at Dark Sugars, or at, actually at the back of Dark Sugars in Brick Lane in London with Carleen de Souza, just at the tail end of her first solo exhibition, which is called Believing is Seeing. Unfortunately, if you're watching this, the show has now closed. However, if you'd like some more information about Carleen and her work, then please do click the link below in the description bar here on YouTube. We've been doing the street art for yeah, a year. For a year, for a year, yeah. yeah. So actually, how I, I mean, I've, I wanted to do street art for a long, long time, but I, I've, I've known that I wasn't good enough, personally, to do street art. So that's why I never, I never did it. I just admired, like, you know, street artists from a distance. So how did you then build that confidence and get good enough to actually then go out and start okay. doing it? So, um, I found myself in a space where, I think last year, where I just thought, you know what, Carly, in this time, you're getting older. Do you want to just be, you know, you can, you can do any kind of art that you want, but do you, is it about the money? It's not about the money for me, and I realise that it's really not about the money, it's about what I would truly be happy doing. So last year, for six months, so once a month, for six months, I would go down to a place called League Street, and I would paint a piece. And that's where I started practicing. So at the beginning of this year, I was like, right, that's it. I'm going to now be a street artist. Forget the design, forget fashion, forget whatever hustle, art hustle that I do. I'm going to do fashion and, you know, to make money, I'll, you know, continue to tattoo because I'm also a tattoo artist. Yeah, so that's what I would do. So at the beginning of the year, that's what I decided to do. And everything is just kind of falling into place. Yeah. Okay, so into the, in the street art world, mm and the way that you're working now, yeah. how do you generate income from doing that? The way that I generate income from the street art is being out on the street painting. So then what will happen is uh, I'm very chatty. So I find myself in, in just the most bizarre conversations with random people who take my number and then call me later for all different kinds of projects, art related projects. So I end up in people's houses, um, having like, you know, I'm, I'm a part of people's families that I've just met. I'm, I'm there eating Sunday dinner with them, painting their kids' room, and then it kind of grows from there. And then some uh, family, they might call a family, oh, you've got to see. Because I'll tell you what's funny is that I become their artist. So we had dinner earlier, and in Brick Lane, I've been, I've been in Brick Lane since... April. So since being in Brick Lane, I've been able to build up relationships with different shop owners and, and whatnot. So now, like I said, I've become their artist. So any art projects that they have, they call on me or they tell their people, like, this is who you use. So um, financially, it just comes quite easy. You know, when you don't stress about money, then, then it comes. So um, I just seem to be in the right place all the time to meet the right people. Okay, let's say that at the beginning of January, I said to my friend, we were having dinner for her birthday, and I said to her, you know what, I'm gonna do street art now. And she was like, well, how are you gonna do? I said, I don't know, because all I know is I need to get into Brick Lane. I think that that's where I need to be in order to you know, generate attention for what I'm doing. And then a couple of days later, I'm at a birthday dinner, and um, my friend's friend, good friend, was there with her husband, and her husband happens to own a couple of buildings. So she's saying to him, you, she's a really good artist, you need to give her a, some, some walls to paint on. So he was like, oh, I've got another artist, I'm not gonna say the name of the artist, but he's like, I've already like, you know, given walls to another artist. So, you know, we had, a, we had a great evening. But then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna call him. So I got his number and I called him, I said, look, I don't wanna tread the name on his toes because he did say that you've given such and such walls, but you know, if you've got any hoarding or you know, in future projects or any buildings that you're doing, I would like to, you know, visit. And he was like, don't worry, I tell you what, I've got a building for you. He kind of talks like that, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> he talks nothing like that, I apologise. <laughs> so he sent me a Google map of the area and um, I couldn't see the wall. 
So I've gone down there with another friend now. And we were actually at standing outside looking at the wrong building. He just happens to be like putting petrol in his car. And he's like, oh, Miss Hip Hop, because, you know, Miss Hip Hop, because I was, you know, busting some big moves that night. So he's like, Miss, Miss Hip Hop, oh, yeah. So then he's walking me around. He's like, you can have this building, you can have that building, you can have this building, you can have that building. So by this time, I've really got six pictures, six, yeah, from last year, six pieces that I'd done plus the four every year that I'd been doing at Upfest. Since you started doing the, the uh, street art, mm. what's been your biggest challenge and have you overcome it? Hmm. What's been my biggest challenge? I think, you know what, my biggest challenge was not knowing how to get wall space. So now I know it's either permission or commission. So my, my first thing is commission. So I will approach, can I paint that wall? I'll do what you want. If they don't want, if they want, they don't, because everybody around here likes the idea. Like anybody in general likes the idea of, you know, having artwork. But, you know, if you want to interject your ideas and you're gonna, that's gonna cost you. So, you know, if you don't want to do that, but you still want the artwork done, then you need to just give me whatever I want, but you can pay for the paints, but I won't charge you for the artwork but I will make your wall look pretty, you know? So for me, if I was rich, I would just do this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, if I was rich, I would just travel around the world and just paint walls without, you know, worrying about finances. Um, so that's kind of like the, the attitude that I've had this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay, so now we're both members of the BBFA. Yes, we are. Black British Female Artists Collective, mm -hmm. which uh, NM put in place to address the lack of representation in the art world yeah. of black females. How do you think being involved in that is going to help your career going forward and then help the careers of other black females, black British female artists going forward? Um, for me personally, I think it's good because I've just been out here by myself, just doing whatever, you know. Um, so I think I think NM is great. She's very good at organising and, and you know getting things happening and you know. But yeah, so for me, it's been great to now be a part of something. So like I said, I've just been out here, like you know, just doing my thing. Um, but it doesn't take away from what I'm doing. So I'm still doing what I'm doing, you're still doing what you're doing. We're all just doing what we're doing, but as a collective, it brings us together like this. And I, next year, I think next year, there's going to be very, very big things coming from our collective. Yeah. What would you say has been your biggest success this year and how did you achieve it? My, busy, my biggest success this year, I think, what? Well, I would say my most rewarding success is it okay that I changed what you just asked. Okay, <laughs> feel so, free. All right. <laughs> so my most rewarding success this year was um, going to Tunisia. So I was invited to Tunisia um, by it was a project by Scanlon Inc., who in, in association with um, the British Council. So I was out in Tunisia about two months ago um, teaching graffiti. Tunisia was a great experience because uh, the the people there are, are lovely. First of all, it was it was just a beautiful experience working, teaching, um, working alongside. So it was a hip hop. It was a hip hop um, workshop. So we had two dancers and, and me, the the artist, and we went out there and we taught them the elements. You know, some of the elements of hip hop, and they're hugely into hip hop. So you had like little kids teaching these little kids how to you know, hold the can and like, they ain't even got the energy. Like, they're like, oh. <laughs> you know, you actually got to help them press <laughs> to get the paint out, but they all loved it. They all loved it and I loved it. And that's a three year project that's gonna go on, but I, that was the most rewarding. Wow. Yeah. What does success in the art world mean to you? Happiness. I mean, I can only say that it means happiness for me because I recognise that I've wanted to be an artist for a very, very long time. There was a time when I thought, ooh, I think this was about two years ago, when I was, I was actually quite ill, and I was thinking to myself, I think I need a real job now, because I've been, I've been winging it for way too long. 
And then I came to my senses and I said, no. Nope. What would it mean, like, to call yourself successful, mm. what would you have had to achieve, have had to have achieved? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, even though I, I feel like I've still got a long way to go, just because, well, in, mm, it looks like total freedom to me, mm. but I've been free for a very long time. So maybe I'm more successful than, i tell you what's funny, right? All of my friends' children are like, are you famous, Carly? Because I think you're famous. I'm like, why do you think that? Because you've got a website. So is that all it takes to be famous? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? And you've got a couple of videos on YouTube. It's like, yeah, but is that all it takes to be famous? So I guess fame looks different to different people, doesn't it? But yeah. for me, uh, success, sorry, not fame, success. I already feel successful because I'm already in that space where I'm doing what I want. So when I decide that I'm going to do something, there's never any barriers. It's just, it just happens. So even BBFA um, has come along at the right time because I guess it's what I needed in order to, to move forward, you know, because I realized that I've, I've been doing things by myself for so long that I don't want to anymore. So now I'm in a space where now I'm um, one half of the graffiti crew. You've got to look out for that space. Like, what we're going to, I'm, I'm excited and amped about what we're about to do. If you could, if you could get in a time machine right now okay. and go back to uh, when you first stepped out, stepped into the art world, okay. right, what advice would you give the young Carly? Watch out for the leeches and the sharks. Because, well, actually, they've all been a great part of my learning period. So maybe not. Mm. But maybe I would, mm. I don't know. Like, I mean, on my journey, there's been a lot of people that have seen my talent and want to eat off of it somehow. Which I've got to be honest with you, I don't mind as long as I eat too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we can we can work something out where we both eat, but you know those leeches that just want to take what you have for their own personal gain and you know tuck money away. I would um, not be so trusting of everybody that I encounter. I don't know. I think that's it because I'm very much a believer in everything is what I've made it to be anyway. So, like I said, I create my own existence. So. All of the downs and all of the ups, all of the ups and the downs were were what I was supposed to experience. Yeah. So there's been no real mistakes in my career so far. Yeah. yeah. And what about if you met a, a young stranger now who mm. said, "I want to be a street artist, just like you." Yeah. What advice would you give her? Well, I told them to be fearless, be fearless, and just do what you want to do. And you know, if it feels right, then just do it, and don't because sometimes people give you a give you advice that's not necessarily the right advice so you know sometimes you'll have people advise you from not such a good place mm -hmm. so I, I would say to this is what I do say to any young artist just go and practice hello welcome back and thanks very much for watching that edition of art success with Carleen de Souza and me Adelaide de Moa. now as we discussed Carleen is a member of the BBFA Black British Female Artist Collective, as am I. If you'd like more information about that, please do click the link in the description bar below. Now, just in case you didn't already know, I am an artist and I really enjoy picking the brains of other artists to find out the kind of challenges that they've had to face and how they've overcome them and the successes, the things that they've achieved that they're really proud of and how they've achieved those successes and passing on those lessons to other artists through my YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to my channel because by subscribing you get to keep up to date with all of the latest interviews like this one and you just never know where I'm gonna end up. Until next time, take care, bye.